I was like, right after I said, how are you? Hey. Hi, Alan. How, how are you? On? It is. I, um, I'm having I'm some network I'm okay. issues. Man, the network just seems... Yeah. Yeah. On my end of camp, I'm not sure. Going, yeah, and the lights, you know, lights are flickering a little bit, too, you know. Yeah, there's a weird kind of strobe light effect going on. I'm not, not really sure what's going yeah. on. So, uh, how's it going, Alan? It's okay. It's okay. You know, I'm still, um, I'm still, I'm really bothered by that radio show. I mean, oh, wasn't that was fun? Play. That was such it a was, great no, show. Thank no, you. it was horrible. Thank you it so much horrible. for being a part of that. I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I thought that was a really useful um, exercise. There was nothing. There's nothing that came out of it. It was just lies and innuendo. I mean, I thought what everybody contributed was really meaningful, and I think, um, I think it was great to hear from different voices and and uh, I mean, can you see and get me. Am I? Get, like to the bottom, get to Ooh. the bottom of, those, uh, of some of those mysteries, like, for example, the Foot Locker. You know, that, was, that was oh, a really yeah. big question about Zazie's Foot Locker, and now we know it was Uncle Hector. So, um, you know, maybe, not even maybe, important. Big maybe, deal, cheeseburgers in a Foot Locker. Because I mean, she did sure. feel really strongly about those sloppy It wasn't cheeseburgers, it's Sloppy Joes. And um, maybe, um, maybe uh, she'll change the combination, and that mystery will be solved. What's up this week, Alan? Well... We're mixing it up, Martha. It's time to mix it up. Haven't we been mixing it up for weeks? I know, but this is this is remix. Oh. And, uh, this is this is kind of uh, this is where some of the most creative stuff happens in DS106. It's some of the more challenging things, both conceptually and uh, logistically, what people come to create. But you know, uh, remix and you know, and I think we. Um, so it's always been a conversation because in some places we call them mashups, some places we call them remix, and you know if you peg me to say what the difference is, but you know, I, I read once that they're really different, out. but I can never understand what the difference is. Yeah, and in the end, I think who cares? It's sort of yeah. um, it's all about um, taking uh, disparate, different uh, media sources, a lot of it from pop culture, but it could be our own, and um, making something new out of it. You know, and it's everything from you know some of the my favorite ones are the um, the recut trailers, like where they take um, a trailer for a movie like The Shining, uh, which is a horror movie, and they make it in the trailer sound like it's a, a love story. Um, so That's a it's sort great of like, one. Yeah, altering the, the meaning of, of content just by resequencing or reordering. Um, and then the other part, you know, mashup to me maybe sometimes a little bit is more about just combining. Um, Many many different sources into one thing, you know, kind of like you know, you know, girl talks music, uh, maybe more mashup than remix. I don't know. I get it mixed up. That's the thing. I do too. I, you know which I, one I love is the um the Buffy, the one with Buffy and uh and that other sh the the stupid vampire movie. Oh, what's the yeah. stupid? Oh, Twilight. Yeah. Twilight. Yeah. Where they mix together Buffy and the dude from Twilight, and um and not only I think is it really effective, like they do a re they did a great job kind of mixing those clips together, but I actually think it also ends up having a fairly um, interesting message. You know, it, it it helps you to think about um, the narratives in those two supposedly similar. I mean, similar in the sense that they're dealing with similar kinds of topics, um, um, stories, but the difference in the way female heroines. Are treated um, in those different in those different uh, two very different narratives. So I think that's a yeah. great one. And that one is so. I mean, you can tell that it's professionally edited, but it's so expertly edited. Yeah. Because um, you feel like the, these people are having they're clips from um, different shows, but they're having a conversation. Um, it's and really amazing. Almost, yeah, you forget at one point that it's two different shows. Yeah. Um, so, yeah so there's those, and you know, we have a long list of. Um, examples on the site, which is not exhaustive, it's just kind of, you know, cherry picking. Right, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a way to dip your feet in. Right. So the first thing that we're going to ask everybody to do this week is sort of spend some time thinking more about Remix. They already looked at, you know, a piece of Everything is a Remix last week in our work with video because we wanted them to think and explore the whole idea that narrative um, and what we see in films is very often not original in the way that we maybe uh, expect it to be. Um, so, but they're going to take it to the next level this week and really think um, specifically about the notion of remix um, and how that plays out in our culture and our media 
Um, and so we've asked yeah, them to yeah. look at a few examples and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, kind of, I think it's better that we don't like be definitive about it. It's, it's really we want the students to sort of come to their own understanding, you know. So um, the, uh, everything is remix is such a wonderful uh, series. Yes, it's, it's small chunks. Um, actually, they're they're about like eleven minutes, and really, um, it's about seven minutes of content, and it's always worth sticking through the credits to see the little bit that he adds at the end. Yeah. But you know, the first one, you know, he frames around remix and music, um, which is kind of where a lot of this started. But I think one of my favorite ones is, is part three where he talks about um, creativity and the remixing of ideas and kind of shattering some illusions about the way we think about inventors, you know, and the fact that, you know, some people get cited for inventing things, but often many people are working on the same things at the same time. At the same time, yeah. That's a really interesting phenomenon, actually. So they're going to do that, and then we actually have a category on the assignment site for mashups, and we're right. asking them to do seven points of mashup. Right, right. And there's, a, there's about, um, I was looking through them last night, there's 15 different assignments in there. And, and of course, if you don't like them, this is a good time for you to submit a new one. Um, but a lot of these are video. There's a couple design ones um, in there that involve mashing up some design elements. Um, and, and these take some time because you've got to like conceptualize it. You've got to go out and find the media that you're going to use and then figure out how you're going to re-edit and put it together. Um, but again, when the in the past, these are some of the favorite um, things that we've seen produced by DS106 students. Absolutely. And it's a really an opportunity, you know, I think as well for students to work with work with the media that they're interested in. You know, if there's particular films that they love, a particular genre of music they really love. I mean, you know, um, if you're drawn to a particular style of design or art, you know, use that as a springboard for your um, for your mashup assignments. Work with the stuff that's that speaks to you, um, because that's probably how you're going to be the most successful. You know, and you're going really, to understand that that stuff yeah. the best. Yeah, and it's really a chance to sort of like um, really go a little bit not crazy, but um, while with really fictionalizing or making things up, like totally reinventing the way a movie works, or by you know overlaying you know, your own dialogue on top of um, a movie to change the whole meaning. Absolutely, um, and, yeah. And we, really, we really want people to kind of bust out on this one. Yeah, yeah. Bust and if out. they are feeling intimidated, you know, it's like it can be a little bit daunting to be like, oh, I'm going to completely reinvent, you know, I'm gonna, a particular movie or a particular, completely change the meaning of a particular trailer. You know, like I said, think about the thing, the movie that you love most, you know, something that you've watched so many times, you know it in and out. It's going to be so much easier to work with something that you know that well than trying to do something that you're unfamiliar with. So, And it's really, really challenging to match up dialogue from different sources. So it is. So don't kill yourself trying to make it perfect. Just make it interesting. Exactly. Yeah, the, that Buffy and Edward one is, like you said, a professionally produced amazing mashup. Nobody's going to be able to do that in a week. Um, so, you know, oh, that's... If they, if they, that's they, they might. You know, they, they could do something If like they that. were Alan Levine. <laughs> You've not seen my sloppy mashups. <laughs> um, and then, why don't you talk a little bit about the Remix machine? Because this yeah, is your this baby. Is, yeah, this is kind of crazy. So, um, we built this thing last semester. So, it's, it's kind of a remixing of DS106 assignments. So when you go to the remix.ds106.us site, um, there's a little button for generator. And what this does is it randomly pulls up one of the 300-some assignments. And then there's these like 10 or 12 different, we call them remix cards, which is sort of a twist on how to do it differently. So you might get the assignment on cat breading, um, and the, the twist on it might be do it opposite. So the idea is to sort of combine those two to interpret uh, the assignment to do it differently, to remix the actual intent of the assignment. Now, if they come together, some of them aren't going to make sense. So if that doesn't work, reload so you get a combination that you think is interesting. Then, um, once that remixed assignment is created, there's a little remix button. It actually makes a whole new entry on the site that combines the two. Um, you can look there, and what we want you to do is when you do that assignment, if there are examples listed that students have done previously, we want you to go in and actually use some of their media when you do this remixed assignment. Not all of them will have um, examples there, so if not, um, be very um, particular about going out and finding uh, bits of other people's work, especially if it's from DS106, 
and include it as the raw material for your remix. It doesn't count as a remix if you remix your own stuff. That's not remix. That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> cheating is bad. <laughs> um, and um, I was going to say something else about the remix machine. Oh, and then it will give them a new tag so that they then submit it. Yeah. And yep. they generate uh, content on the remix site for that people will see their completed remix assignment. Right. Right. So, and sometimes they're, they'll generate a remix assignment that's already been generated, right? In which case, there may be examples that somebody's already done. Um, there there but, could be. But not always. The big thing that people mix is like when you get the, the combination on that first screen where you get them together, um, it doesn't really exist until you press that remix this button. Um, press the button. Some people, yeah, press the button. Okay. They need to make that button giant. Press. I'm going to make a note of that. Press the button. Yeah. And then this week we're going to ask them to do two daily creates. Now let's talk about daily create because you kicked the sand in some people's faces last week. <laughs> this is so much fun. I, I just decided because um, some of the activity waned off and I thought it would be fun to challenge people to see if they could do seven um, daily creates in a row. And today would be the fifth one, so this will end on Tuesday. And this is totally optional, although um, I have to give uh, nods out there to Chanda and Mohammed who have been playing along. So they've That's been doing, right. Uh, all the daily crates in a row. Um, so there's probably going to be some sort of magical pixie dust extra crates. They are for away. life. Yeah, they are for life. Um, for other people, hey, you can do this at any time, but the thing I wanted to do was just to try to get more people involved in doing daily crates, and that certainly happened. We got up to 20-some per day. And some people who never did it before are really engaged in it. Uh, the other thing is that uh, I'll put the challenge out. The end of the challenge is to take those seven things and build a story out of them, like remix those in a way. Um, so I think, I think I'll roll this into a new mashup assignment. So if people want to do it, um, it's out there for them. Awesome. So basically, basically take the things that we've done this week, you know, the picture that has no sign of, of, of people, the telemarketing call what's on channel DS-106, and try to build a narrative out of these parts of media that probably don't belong together. I love it. Unless you're like me and you've been telling the same story with your daily creates. Well, you're smart. It's like I planned it that way. It's like you planned it that way. Well, I have a lot to share. I mean, I, and, and that actually brings up a point that I want to make about um, to all of our, particularly Mary Washington students, as a kind of a... I don't know, maybe a bit of foreshadowing. That's a very effective narrative ooh, technique. Ooh, 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 ooh. That perhaps if you have not been engaging in the narrative of camp for the last eight weeks, you know, you haven't really been paying attention to all these crazy characters and the conversations we've been having, the weird stuff that's been emerging on campgrounds and elsewhere, that perhaps this would be a week to start paying attention to that in preparation. Oh, no, wait, wait. Yes for what we may be doing next week, campers. Yes. Anyway, moving right along. Good luck. Uh, then they need to do a video, or not a video, letter home at the end of the week. And we are raising the bar on that too and asking them to think about ways in which they can kind of remix in their letter home. Yeah. Not even really sure what that's going to look like, but hey. No. No, no, we really want that to be interpreted. You and know, that's, you're that's eight right. weeks into DS-106, you should be able to bring your A-game to this, right? I know, I know. And this is the letter that, you know, you want your, your folks back at home to be so impressed that they're going to want to come run out and meet you uh, when we let you out of camp at the end of week 10. If we let you out of camp at the end of yeah, week 10. Yeah, if we 10. do that, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So that's, that bas yeah, that's basically the work for this week. But... Mm -hmm. There's there are two other things that are looming. Oh, what is that a baseball bat, Alan? No, no. I'm I've been I'm trying to learn my didgeridoo. So you didgeridoo? I didn't know you had a didgeridoo. It's a, it's a mini one. That's, that's intriguing. I can't get that sound right though. I've never I've never um, seen a didgeridoo up close. Maybe you could bring that by um, camp headquarters one day, and we could. Yes. Wow, that's 
your didgeridoo has has devil horns. <laughs> but there's two things that are on the syllabus for our UMW students that many of them have not done, and it's part of their grade. So missing out. Yep. Missing out the percentages. And what are those? They need to submit how many assignments? Two assignments. Two assignments. That means submitting an idea for an assignment, just so everybody understands this. We know you've been doing assignments. Now you're right. actually coming up with an idea for other people to do. And they have to be good ones. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I cleaned through some ones from last semester, and a lot of them were really more like daily creates, and I did move them over there. Um, yeah. But you have to sort of, they have to be in, in the vein of the ones that are already in there. Yeah. Yeah, don't, you know, don't cop out on these. You want to challenge next semester's DS-106 students. This is your opportunity if you feel like you, you know, some of these assignments were hard. This is how you can, um, you can punish future DS-106 students so that they suffer as much as you. Come up with right. some challenging assignments for our students. And they need to right. do and two of those. Yeah, and some people seem to miss on the bottom left corner of that website. There's a big light bulb button, and that's where uh, that's where you click to create an assignment. Um, the other thing is, um, it really helps if you actually do your own assignment. So there's yeah. an example there. Yeah. You know? Or if you're getting if it, if you're inspired by something you've seen, make sure you you know show that as an example at the very least. You know, because yeah. people need you. You all know this, having gone through DS106. It helps to have examples. Absolutely. The other thing that helps, Alan, is to have tutorials. Seriously, seriously, and and, and um, yeah, and I've often a lot of times students ask like, what should a tutorial look like? Um, and it could be many ways. I mean, one way is just to list the steps. Um, I think it helps if you list things um, to do it with with like illustrations. Um, Wow, are the movers coming in? Um, um, well, they're trying to pack up because camp ends in two weeks. So, yeah. you know, um, trying to box up some do, things. Yeah, some people do like screencasts. There's some free screencasts uh, where we can actually record what's going on on your screen um, and do things. And um, some of our students have already been doing that sort of um, thing for some of their assignments. Um, what I always say is like if you came across this assignment and we're looking for a tutorial, what is the thing line, that right having done exactly. it would have really helped you? Today. Helped you. That's right. You're trying to help future DS106 students and participants. So yeah. that, I think that's the best advice. Um, you know, think about what you would have needed and create that for somebody else. Pay it forward. Yep, definitely. And those definitely. are required. You need to do two of those. So if you have not yeah. created your assignments or your tutorials, ten percent, baby, ten percent. It's important. As well, as well as the participation. We, you know, a lot of people have been really active in Twitter and, and commenting and doing really well. And some people have not. So we all been kind of missing in action. Yeah. I know. I, mean, I, I leave comments and it, it feels like it's just you and me talking to each other. I know. And like you know, this. Every, every, yeah. Everything, um, you know, think about when you get a comment on one of your posts, you know, what it does. And, you know, every... I'd like to see every blog post that our students have done to have a comment, especially from people besides us. Absolutely. We do, we do leave great comments. Well, um, you know, Campfire last week was special because we did, we did a very, yeah. that very special radio show, which I hope everybody listened to because, um, because it really was a great experience. But, you know, we'll have to talk about Campfire this week. What would be most useful? I, don't I know, know that... I know that one of our open online participants is trying to put together a storytelling show this Friday. Oh, really? Um, so tell me about that. Oh, who is it who is doing it? It's, um, uh, I should know this. Uh, it's uh, Mike, Mike Berta is oh, putting cool. it together. So he's going to be doing that. He's putting out an invitation to anybody who wants to participate. You know, if you didn't do your radio show, students, right. this might be a, a good thing to participate in and blog about. Um, contact Mike Berta. That's his right. Twitter handle, M I K E B E R T A, on Twitter, and see if you can be a part of his show. Um, but we'll also have to talk about whether or not we want to do some other kind of campfire this week. You know, like you were saying um, on the show the other day, a lot of campers are missing. Uh, we don't know if that's just because everybody's hunkered down somewhere doing work, or if they fell in the lake and didn't know how to swim, or maybe yeah, got a little bit of the horses. 
Yeah, some of them seem to be so busy uh, during the day um, working on their art. Um, and, and I know it did help, you know, it's a you know, schedule thing um, to have it um, in the evening hours. Yeah. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe we'll we try and do, do that. We, we could do a we could do an audio one. We could uh, and hang out. Um, we could do. Or or we could um or do a um a, you know a Google Hangout one. Um, you Alan, know, are you I, okay? I, There's a weird light flashing. Well, yeah, the the whole the whole electrical thing is going. Um, my and my um the AC on my computer here is just not charging. Um, and I'm down to like sixteen percent. So. Oh, well, we should call it a day then, because I wouldn't w w want to take all your energy. Yeah, well, I'm just feeling so transparent. Yeah, you are. You're looking a little transparent, actually. Yeah. Martha, are you there? Alan, can you hear Hello? me, Alan? I don't think Alan can. I don't think Alan can hear me. Your voice is kind of like a alien sort of thing to it. I don't know what's going on with Alan and his transmission there. He seems to be having some technical difficulties. Um, Alan? Martha? Yeah, I don't think he can hear me, folks. Martha. Well, that's kind of creepy and Martha. weird. And I think we've got some more movers coming to start boxing stuff up. I can't believe we're already boxing. Alan? Yeah, Martha. Alan. Oh, Alan, can you hear me? Yeah, barely. Oh, okay. All right. But uh, my, yeah. My, my the video got like really tiny, so I gotta like get really close to the screen to see. Yeah. I don't know what's uh, going on here. Hmm, that's There's odd. Like this, and and you know those um, you know those sensors that they have mounted on the wall that they said were to you know detect rare gases. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like carbon monoxide and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it's are, been blinking? It's it's been blinking since um like ten minutes ago. Well, is that the light, that the blink, is that the flashing light I see? Yeah. Well, maybe you should get out of that building, Alan, if there, if there might be some strange gas in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I better. Uh, I'm going to gather up the, the, um, the tapes that are here so we have all okay. that media go, in the same place. Go get some fresh air. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right, Alan, well, that was great, and... Uh, <laughs> and Alan's going to play us out. Welcome to week nine of uh, Camp Magic MacGuffin. You know where to find us if you need us. Goodbye, everyone.